Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Einz's summons as requested by MSX958, so thank you very much for your suggestion. Throughout the series we have seen Einz use multiple summons in a variety of scenarios. Typically we see him summon undead but he is capable of summoning angels as well. The only downside to angels is that they do not receive the benefits from Einz's necromancer classes. The majority of his summons come under the category of low, middle or high tier undead. The majority of these have a time limit like his other summons, although certain middle tier undead, namely death knights and soul eaters, can be made permanently by consuming corpses to summon them. Moving on to low tier undead, we have five types of skeleton. Those being skeleton archer, centipede, mage, rider and warrior. These are all typically quite weak and rely on strength in numbers more than actual strength. Skeleton archers have a standard bow and arrow without much draw power, and skeleton centipedes are said to be easy to defeat when they first emerge, but can be troublesome if left alone. As for skeleton mages, they do not specialise in combat and are the lowest rank in the hierarchy of the Elder Lich. In Yggdrasil they required a Book of the Dead, Deserted Souls Treasure Book and Dark Ritual Document, as well as 30 magical levels, 10 skeleton mage levels, and to clear a special event in order to evolve into an Elder Lich like Ainz once did. Skeleton riders are skeleton warriors with low tier armour and weapons that ride skeleton horses and typically use spears for quick charge attacks. Skeleton warriors themselves have better equipment than the riders with stronger magical enhancements, immunity to ice type damage and are capable of dealing quick heavy damage to opponents. The skeleton warriors are estimated to be level 16 while the riders are estimated to be around level 2 in the web novel. Other low tier undead are bone vultures which have razor sharp beaks and talons and in the light novel Ein summoned them to halt interference from other adventurers when Inferior was kidnapped. Next are wraiths who resemble a black wailing ghost but their appearance will change depending on the observer. They appear as goblin ghosts to goblins or as human ghosts to humans for example. Wraiths have astral bodies that allow them to pass through walls up to a certain thickness and are specialised for stealth. Wraiths can steal a foe's life force and their hit and run tactics make it likely they deal damage by negative touch. They used to work with Undead Slave Sight allowing the summoner to see from the Wraith's perspective, but this was later patched out of the game. Eins could also create zombie beasts which are a range of animals such as dogs, boars or snakes. They would immobilise an opponent by eating their feet before killing them. Zombie trolls would look identical to how they did before they turned into zombies and you wouldn't be able to tell they were undead without undead detection. Zombie trolls would also lose their racial traits like regeneration but would gain new ones instead. Zombie dragons could be created from any dragon corpse with the zombie dragon being strong enough to survive a single third tier spell from Eins. The final low tier undead are elder liches who can command lesser undead and cast destructive spells such as lightning and fireball. Elder Liches retain their intelligence unlike most undead and can also cast 4th tier summon undead. Moving on to middle tier undead, we have the two undead Ein summoned in the cemetery to clear his way in season 1, those being Corpse Collector and Jack the Ripper. Corpse Collector is simply a muscular undead who easily overpowers low tier undead. He is also implied to have enough strength to tear apart a human body. While Corpse Collector is brute force, Jack the Ripper is highly agile with deadly precision. He laughs hysterically as he fights and his slashes are so fast they leave a slight after image. Although they did make a brief appearance, the most famous middle tier undead are the Death series. The series includes Death Knights, Warriors, Assassins, Priests and Death Wizards. Death Knights are level 35 undead summons that stand a mighty 2 meters tall and wield a jagged sword and shield. Death Knights have an attack power of 25 and a defensive power of 40. They are very physically strong and despite their massive stature they are extremely fast and can easily gain enough momentum to use their shield as a battering ram. In addition to this they have two notable skills. The former is drawing out the hate of those disturbed by the Death Knight's appearance to force the enemy to attack the Death Knights. The other is a one time ability that allows a Death Knight to survive a lethal hit and leaves the Death Knight on 1 HP. This ability can only proc above a certain HP threshold though, so can't just be used to survive an extra blow. On top of this, those who are slain by a Death Knight's hand can become level 17 Squire Zombies, and those who are killed by Squire Zombies themselves turn into zombies. There is a cap on the number of Squire Zombies that can be created, but there is no restriction on the number of regular zombies created from Squire Zombies. As for Death Warriors, they carry two long bladed swords as opposed to a sword and a shield. Death Warriors also have other weapons hung around their waist such as axes, maces, crossbows and pikes among others. 
Their power is on par with Death Knights and they can recall the thrown weapons to their hand. Moving on to Death Assassin, they have a high damage output thanks to their high critical strike chance and high damage. Despite the name of Assassin, they are bad at concealing themselves but make up for it with their alarming amount of damage that they can deal. Death Wizards and Death Priests have no details but are presumably spell and faith casting variants of the Death Knight family. The final members of the middle tier class of undead are Soul Eaters. Soul Eaters are the mounts that Eins uses for his army and are the yellow skeletal horses we have seen on multiple occasions throughout the series. They aren't just useful as mounts though as they have long range attacks and even one of them is comparable in strength to a small country's military force in the new world. Soul Eaters have area affecting abilities such as radiating an aura of fear. They can also consume the souls of the deceased which not only sustains them and heals their HP but makes them stronger as well. Additionally, when they kill a target through their skill, they gain a temporary power-up buff that makes them harder to defeat. Moving on to high tier undead, let's look at the undead Pandora's actor summoned against the Platinum Dragonlord, those being Doomlord and Elemental Skull. The Doomlord is a level 70 monster with stats well beyond its level that primarily uses a war scythe. The Doomlord has a unique skill called Ruinous Knight that is tied to its biggest disadvantage. The main weakness is the Doomlord continuously loses health although it can be recovered for exposure to negative energy. As for Ruinous Knight itself, it has four effects. It increases the rate at which Black Smog is released into the Doomlord's surroundings, increases the Doomlord's combat related stats in exchange for faster HP depletion, and ignores any damage reduction caused by a difference in level. Undead Knight also allows the undead stood in the Doomlord's fog, including the Doomlord, to take reduced damage from light and holy elemental attacks, as well as reduce any bonus damage caused by a difference in karma. This ability could also stack with and be triggered simultaneously to other buffs. As for Pandora's other summon, Elemental Skull is level 68 and has far less HP than the Doomlord. That said, the Skull has high magic resistance and can negate fire, lightning, acid and ice attacks alongside a few other elements. Furthermore, every one of the Skull spells was boosted by maximized magic. As for the Skull's known spells, there is the 10th tier Divine Spell 7 Trumpeter and the 10th tier spell Mist of Super Acid. Mr. Super Acid engulfs a target in an acidic steam that damages not just the target, but also any equipment. As for the Elemental Skull's 9th tier spells, these are Vermilion Nova that engulfs the target in a pillar of flame, and Polar Claw which makes a slashing attack with a floating claw. Polar Claw has the highest damage of all ice based spells and emits a cold aura. Other high tier summons include Death Emperor and Death Empress which have nothing known about them, as well as Eternal Death and Eyeball Corpse. Eternal Deaths are level 90 thief type monsters that hold the passive skill Aura of Death and Decay. This skill combines the effects of Ainz's Despair Aura 1 and 5, causing instant death and stat penalties to enemies. The stat penalties were not mind altering and could therefore bypass mind altering immunities making them particularly troublesome to deal with. As for the final high tier undead, they are eyeball corpses. They are pink spheres that are 2 meters in diameter and have countless eyes that were once removed from different creatures. They have excellent visual abilities that potentially rival or even exceed Aura's range of vision. Their value is in surveillance, so while they are not offensively strong, they were said to be the nemesis of stealthy beings regardless of whether they used magic or skills to do so. Eins's other summons include Primal Air, Earth, Fire, Star and Water Elementals. Eins can summon each of these once per day through the power of the Staff of Eins or Gone. Each are level 87 and the incarnation of the elements they are named after. The Primal Star Elemental however is the highest tier of Elemental and as such its level is actually 90 instead. Eins can also summon each of the following demons that can each be summoned using the 10th tier spell Armageddon Evil. They are Hell Scythe, Inferior Demon, Rotting Demon, Supplicant and War Devil. In the web novel, Eins could also summon the creature Cerberus who was a free-headed beast in Greek mythology who guarded the gates of Tartarus. His appearance in Yggdrasil is much similar to that in Greek mythology, also having three dog heads and three tails of snakes. Other summons that Eins has access to are Death Cavaliers who are strong creatures that hold the ability to speak unlike most undead, High Wraiths who drain the life force from their surroundings and spread terror and fear, and also Messengers who Eins summoned so the Lizardmen could hear him in Season 2. As for those summoned by super tier magic, there are the Dark Youngs from the Katsi Plains and the Cherubim Gatekeepers who are angels summoned by the spell Pantheon. The final summon is an Overlord Wiseman who Eins considered to be the strongest of all the mercenary NPCs. They were level 90 and expert magic users.
And that wraps up pretty much everything. So let me know your favourite of Ainz's summons down below. If you enjoyed, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it really helps out the channel. Our Discord server is linked in the description so please feel free to join that and thank you once again to QMystic for the incredible thumbnails. Their channel will also be linked in the description below. With all that said, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have an awesome day.